What's up everyone? I'm on the new Angway X26, a 1200 watt triple suspension foldable e-bike. I'm going to tell you all about it and show you how it rides. Let's get to it. So I want to tell you a little bit about this X26, give you some of the specs, some of the details, what we like about it. We're going to ride a little bit more and kind of give you our final take in just a second. But this is a foldable e-bike, which is really interesting because it's absolutely humongous. So to be able to fold it gives you an opportunity to like put it in a car or in the back of a truck. Now I'm not certain that I would probably fold this thing up just because of how big and how heavy it is but it is a really cool bike. They have really big 26 inch tires that are on these cool metal wheels. I like that they have the six spokes. It just gives it a very unique look. Kind of fits in with their whole vibe here going for this X26. And they do have 24 inch and 20 inch versions. So it's the X20, the X24, and this is the X26. I wanted to get the largest one just because, you know, I'm a bigger guy, but this is a really large bike, just FYI. And we'll talk more about that in a second. Another cool feature that this bike has is its triple suspension. So we have a big front fork there. We also have a mid suspension here, and then we have these dual rear suspensions that are just monstrous. So obviously this bike, fantastic for off-roading. We have another Engway foldable bike, which is smaller and it's a little bit more apt for riding around, cruising around the streets, but this is definitely an off-roading machine. This specific model does have dual batteries. So we have a front 19.2, amp hour lithium ion battery 48 volt and then in the seat post we also have a 48 volt 10 amp hour lithium ion battery so you get a ton of range with this x26 but we haven't had a chance to run it all the way dead maybe we'll get to that in the future so there's a couple other features i wanted to talk about one being the hydraulic brakes so this does have front rear hydraulic brakes and it's great that it has the hydraulic brakes however they don't seem to be as tight as some of the other e-bikes we have now it just could be that this bike isn't tuned up as good. I tried to loosen them and, you know, kind of adjust them to make them better, but it does take a little bit longer to stop on this bike than a couple of the other e-bikes where it's almost like it just locks up instantly and you have a lot more control. So I'm not sure if it's something that's just with this bike or something we can adjust, but it's great that they have the hydraulic brakes on this one. Another thing that stood out to me was that this bike claims 60 Newton meter of torque, which is a little bit lower than some of the other bikes that we've had. However, I really like that this bike has a more variable pedal assist. It's not just all or nothing. If you push hard on the bike, the bike goes harder, but if you're going slower, you know, it doesn't have quite as much torque. And that's kind of a benefit because sometimes I feel like some of the e-bikes just go all or nothing. And then, you know, you're pedaling, but you're not really doing anything. It just feels like you're cheating down the road. I feel like this is very well balanced with regards to that. However, going uphill, this doesn't really keep up with the Magicycle bikes that I was just talking about that really can just, they're all or nothing and just go. So you do lag a little bit going up hills, but honestly, I'm just chilling on the way up these hills anyway, so I don't feel like I have to keep up. And then when it comes to going downhill, it absolutely cooks. And I think that's for two reasons. One, it doesn't seem to have like a governor going downhill, or at least it doesn't cut off at the same point as the Magicycle bikes. They kind of just stop around 29, 30 miles an hour. But I had this up to 40 miles an hour going down the hill and sometimes even higher. And it's just really fun to go down the hill. In addition, the front sprocket is much larger than our Magicycle bikes, which is a limiting factor on those because if you're gonna be going 30 miles an hour, then you wanna be able to pedal and assist. But at that speed, the Magicycle sprocket is just too small and you can't really do anything. However, with the Angway having a sprocket that's much larger, you just are able to assist the bike even if you're going at top speeds. The bike does have five pedal assists, so you can go one, two, three, four, five. It also has a couple different modes. You can have sport, eco mode, and normal. I'm not as informed as I probably should be with regards to the differences of those modes. I know they do have regenerative braking on this bike, so it might be that you need to be in eco mode in order to get that. It also has an eight gear shifter too, so it is nice to have that eighth gear. Our other bikes only have seven. Again, with the larger sprocket, does come in handy when you're trying to get to top speeds. 
Something that's a little different than my other bikes too is it does have the throttle on the left hand side here. On our other bikes, we have a twist throttle, which you know it can be uncomfortable as well um, if you you know don't want to have to keep that down. However, uh, either one of them are irrelevant if you're just going to have the pedal assist on and you're maxing it out at you know pedal assist five. So not that big a deal. But I do like the screen in general. It's a nice clean LED screen. It's in the middle. It does not get in the way or anything, and it's it's big enough, but it's not too big that it takes up all the space. So besides the brakes, which is really the only downside so far, it does have kind of an odd seat post. That seat post seems to hang down so far, it sometimes is the limiting factor when I'm taking it upstairs. I'm not really sure why they designed it that way, but I do know they do have that second battery down the seat post. And this does seem to last a lot longer than our other bikes with regards to battery life. Then lastly, before we talk about the ride, it does have this kind of cool little seat in the back here. I guess you could put a second person on that but it doesn't have any like pegs to put your feet on. Uh, you know, so where would they put their feet if there's a second person sitting on there? And honestly, I might just rather have a basket or just like a flat, you know, metal area to put a basket on as opposed to having a second seat. It'd be fun to see if I can get a second person on there and I'm sure there's plenty of power on the Engway bike to take two people, but I, I don't know if it's that logical for us to have two people. Now, as far as the ride overall, I'm pretty happy with this bike. For the most part, it keeps up with the Magic Cycle bikes we have. It's not quite as fast going up the hills, but typically we catch back up going down the hills and it just has a much more balanced feel with regards to riding off-road. Having the nice triple suspension that this bike has is also really awesome for off-roading. We can cruise over all these trails sitting down and that's just something that I wasn't able to do on just you know the front suspension bikes when we're off-roading. So the combination of the four inch wheels, the triple suspension, the you know comfortable seat, all those options, really nice for riding off-roads. One thing I should mention is that the distance from the seat all the way to the handlebars is much further than in some of the other bikes that we have. So we measured, and I think that the Magicycle bikes from seat to handlebars is somewhere in the range of like 18 inches. And the seat up to the handlebars on this Engway bike is almost 25 inches. So somewhere in seven or eight inches further away are the handlebars from the seat. Now for me, I don't really mind it kind of leaning forward, stretching my arms out a little bit, but my editor Eric didn't really like that because it kind of gives you this feeling your back is kind of stretched out a little bit. So I guess it depends on your riding preference. It's probably due to the fact that this bike folds in half, but it's a combination of that distance and then the handlebars also sit forward. So we were even considering if there was an opportunity for us to get a handlebar that was a little bit shorter just to bring that back toward the seat a little bit more, just because it may be uncomfortable for some people that aren't quite as tall. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with this bike. It's definitely a step up from the Engine Pro that we had just because it's larger, it's better for off-roading, it has more power, more battery life, a lot of positives in there. The design is really cool. I like the six spoke wheels, definitely a cool look. Triple suspension, solid, everything about the bike is extremely solid. I mean, it's also, you know, heavy 90 pound bike. So, you know, I think it's built like a tank. A lot of people would enjoy that. Only concerns really are that distance from the seat to the handlebar. So if you're not six foot plus, it might be a little bit of a stretch for you to reach out that far. And then the clearance, just in case you're going over some rocky terrain, if you go over a big rock, you don't want to be hitting that on there. So just be careful with regards to that. Maybe they'll shorten that distance up on future versions of this bike. But I think it's definitely contender for the price. We have Magicycle bikes. We have this, a couple other ones. And I, I think this is one of my favorite bikes, definitely because I can cruise downhill super fast. And the fact that it has a more variable pedal assist where it's just not all or nothing makes you work a little bit but then it, there's a nice payoff when you're going down the hills and still has enough power to keep up with some other bikes that have a little bit more torque. So I really wanna thank Engway for sending the X26 to me here. Check out the links in the description below to find out more information about this entire product lineup. Really cool bikes. And if you guys have any firsthand experience with this one or other ones, make sure to comment below and I'll see you guys on the next video.